Good morning, it's Heather with Bush Poppy Farm. It is um, early July and I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the, um, the front garden slash farm <laughs> where I grow all the flowers. Um, it's gonna be over 100 today, 101, 102. Um, usually when it projects 101, it's more like 103. So <laughs> I figured I'd get as much work done this morning as possible, but I figured um, now when it's shady, I can um, give you a quick tour to show you what's going on in the July garden. And um, then, they, uh, then I have to fertilize with compost tea before the sun hits it and then uh, they should be set to go for a while but yeah things are a little bit different from the last time we were out here which I think was May I think it did a May garden tour um, so yeah welcome into the garden okay welcome to the garden um, our vegetable beds are still coming along we have lots of yummy lettuce um, coming out of here daily I actually uh, this is a second um, round of lettuce and some kale and some Swiss chard. We've been eating on it, so it's smaller because uh, I keep pulling leaves off, but um, that's going well. This is the, um, the bean, uh, bean and squash bed. This, there were potatoes right in here, and uh, in my last video I showed you I harvested those potatoes and then I planted a couple of squash um, that will climb up this trellis. And these are the green beans. We have some bush beans right here. Um, I've been picking off of these as well, so there's no beans on it currently. <laughs> but these are green beans growing up this trellis here. And um, we should start getting beans on those pretty soon. There's lots of flowers. The sweet potatoes are definitely coming along. Um, super happy with how the vining is working there. I, hopefully we'll have a good harvest of the love, love, love sweet potatoes. Um, so I can't wait for those. And then um, over here, tomatoes, they're definitely doing well. The nasturtiums are kind of done for now. They will drop all of their seeds. This is the best part. If you ever grow nasturtiums, the seeds, are huge and they come right off and you can just save them for next year or you can leave them in place and they will just come back year after year. So you really only have to buy nasturtium seeds once. They're huge, they're easy to <laughs> easy to propagate and plant from seed. Um, so tomatoes, um, we've been getting a few. They are starting just starting to really redden up. There's a, one back there that's gonna be harvestable pretty soon. Um, We've got lots of different varieties here. I think there's five varieties of tomatoes. Uh, we've got some good jalapeno traveler peppers in here. Um, they're coming along. We've been picking a few of those. As it gets hotter, we'll get more and more out of this bed. Over here, our pomegranate tree. This is super exciting. This is the first year for this tree and I've got some fruits starting on it. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Because our plum, our uh, yeah, our plum harvest was a bust this year. The birds got them before I could, and um, the apple and pear. Well, the apples didn't set any fruit at all, and the pear set fruit, but uh, they weren't pollinated, so they didn't stay on the tree. This is our thornless black raspberry. We've got lots and lots of. I'm sorry, blackberry. We've got lots on this one. I have three bushes of those. Uh, the blueberries are just about done. Um, we didn't get as many this year. I'm wondering if I should maybe change out the soil. I mean, the plants look super healthy and happy, but um, they've been in those pots for two years. So I don't know, I have to think about that. This is the, the squash bed that's been suffering, suffering from, you can see all the little holes dug. These are, there's rodents or something in here and they keep uprooting entire plants, but I do have some zucchinis um, growing here, which is great. Um, I'm hoping against hope that I'll get some butternut squash out of this, but I don't know, it's getting pretty late in the season. So here's uh, more, oh, this entire branch. See, something cut it right off. This is what I'm finding. Snapped right off, like they, they chewed right through it. And I don't know what's doing that, but it's super annoying. Um, 
but we do still have uh, blackberries on here. Um, then this bed, or I have I have tomatoes everywhere and grow bags all over the place. Um, this bed is primarily corn at this point. I did just seed at a last, because our, our first fall frost is usually at the end of November, but sometimes it's still super hot in November. And so I'm hoping that the um, 60 day turnaround butternut squash that I planted in here in this cloche, it's covered because I'm hoping that um, things won't eat it. Um, anyway, I'm hoping that I'll get some kind of harvest off of that because it's only a 60 day turnaround and we have plenty of time for that. So there's some more corn. Um, and then over here is the cut flower sunflower patch. So um, I'm constantly starting new seeds of this. I have a whole tray that I'm about to plant in here at the end of next week. So um, these sunflowers, they get harvested for bouquets at this stage because you want to give them time to open in the vase for the recipient. So when they're already like this, they're kind of too big. I take these inside the house to enjoy them for myself, but you want to harvest them when they are um, for bouquets. If you want the longest, uh, longest vase life, you harvest them when the petals have just started to pull off the center. Um, this is the pollinator bed which i did a major overhaul of yesterday i'm so happy that i did it because man it was awful I, I planted this bed uh four years ago and it looked great at the time I'll, I, I'll try to find a picture and show you but it was really tiny lots of tiny plants um and it's been here for a long time so lots of weeds and stuff had grown up over time and also some of the perennials had just kind of died out because some of them are just short-lived perennials so I went to the garden center the other day and they were having a major sale on one gallon pots buy one get one free of a lot of things like nepeta and monarda and salvia so I got a great deal on lots of plants and I came in here and I pulled out the dead stuff I did a bunch of weeding and then I planted a whole bunch of new plants New, they're all perennials, um, so these, these guys should come back year after year for the next couple years. And then I mulched, and I'm so, so happy to see this. It looks so much better, oh my gosh. Um, the Budlia here is just going crazy. Um, I use this for bouquets as well. Um, it smells so, so good. I wish you could smell it, but these you want to harvest when the first, let's see if I can find a good one. Like this one's a good one. So you want a lot of the flowers un, um, unopened so that they will open in the vase. Um, also, they will have a, uh, they'll be firmer standing up to water. And so like this is a little too early because see it's still really floppy on the end. That'll flop in the vase. Um, this one's better. It's not as, it's floppy on the very end, but the bottom part here is nice and woody and strong. So that'll be good in the vase. Um, Nepeta, see there's a bumblebee on there right now. Um, we've got a Rudbeckia that's just coming back from last year that was there. Um, and then lots of salvias and stuff in here. And then a surprise Monarda. I love that guy. Look how pretty. I, this, I did not plant this. So I think it came here from seed. Last year I did have a Monarda growing in here. Um, and I think it just reseeded itself. So that's super exciting. So that's the pollinator bed. I did a summer prune on all of that. That's my five branch plum. Here's a pear. So you see how I really cut off all of these. They were probably three feet long, these branches. And summer pruning is does two things. It, um, it controls the shape, so it's, it's the time to shape your fruit trees. Um, but it also, when you prune, anytime you prune, you encourage the plant to put on more growth. And so what summer pruning does is it encourages, here's an apple tree, it encourages the plant to put on more of these fruiting spurs, which is where you hope to get fruit next year. 
Um, there's my pear. And then these roses that I planted um, back in May, I gotta, I gotta stick that guy behind the next, uh, next bar here. They're gonna climb this trellis, but they're already, uh, they've already grown about two feet taller than what they were when I planted them and they do smell lovely. Uh, so it's really nice to walk through here and get the scent of these roses. Um, the sweet pea patch, little tiny patch that I just planted for fun, has been pumping out the blooms. I'm out here cutting sweet peas every morning. Um, they're not super long stems, so they're great for like a little vase. They haven't been too great for um, uh, bouquets, but, uh, but I've been enjoying them in the house. And next year, this entire um, fence line is going to be a one foot wide bed full of sweet peas. So the entire fence line will be planted sweet peas and I'm hoping I'll get some really good. So like here's a decent stem length here. Um, I'm hoping I'll get some more good stem length for um, bouquets for next year out of all those sweet peas. Um, or I'll just sell them as little bunches so people can just get bunches of sweet peas. But these have been a delight. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I had some powdery mildew on there, but who cares? Cause you don't use the foliage. And I kind of expected them to have died back by now. I mean. The nasturtiums at the bottom are kind of on their last leg, um, especially with this heat, but they're hanging in. Um, dahlia bed is going really well. Um, I actually thought that the seedlings would do better. So we'll, we will still get some flowers out of these, but you know, I think I planted them too early. And even though they're forming tubers and I'll save the tubers if they're in good shape um, and plant them out next year, um, it would be nice to know what the flowers are <laughs> before I do that, but we'll see. Um, we do have buds on a lot of the dahlias, and so here's a bud right here. Um, there's one right here about to open. I don't even know what that one's going to I mean, I have a, t a label there, but I don't remember what these look like. This one is white netty okay so it'll be a white dahlia i think i got i don't have any dinner plate varieties because they're really hard to put in bouquets so these are all either um the decorative varieties the cactus varieties or the pom-pom varieties so um, we do have buds they're coming along a little patch of cosmos there that are just not tall enough for csa bouquets but i've been enjoying them in the house for myself um flower bed for cut flowers. This Ami is super tall and really enjoying its life. It's probably four feet tall, so that's been great for bouquets. Um, this little patch of Cosmos here, um, it's funny because the other flower growers I know have had the same issue. This is um, apricot lemonade um, is one of them. They're just not very tall stems at all. So um, like I said, I've been enjoying them in the house, but they just don't work in bouquets because they're not long enough stems. Um, giant marigolds, I have been using these as well in bouquets. We've got a few coming up here. This is Black Knight Scabiosa. This is just another um, succession of them. Um, you can see how the Scabiosa flower starts out. It's called Pincushion Flower also. And then they get, um, I'll show you with the red ones in a further along bed. Um, but they become these huge puffy flowers, which is really cool. Um, Rebecca finally starting to come up in places. Here's one, it's got a lot of insect damage and also a funky, um, funky petal. So I wouldn't use that in a bouquet. That just doesn't look great, but it's pretty to see in the field. Um, this patch of Cosmos is great. It's tall. I've been cutting a lot on this for bouquets. Um, I mean, some of these are four feet tall, which is great. Uh, with Cosmos for bouquets, you want to cut them when the buds are about in this stage, so colored, but not fully opened. Because Cosmos don't really last that long in the vase. When they're already open like this, they're pretty uh, for a bouquet, but they will start shedding pollen right away and um, just won't be enough time in the vase. Very pretty though. Back there is Leatris. Those are going to, that's a perennial. Um, those are going to start going into my bouquets this week, which I'm super excited about because I've been waiting. I planted 
those, uh, they are planted from bulbs. I planted those in February, I think, February, March. So I'm excited. I'm getting a lot more of them um, for the coming years. I just wanted to give them a try this year to see how they were doing. So Losha, finally putting on some height here. And look at these colors. That's so pretty. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that. These still have a little ways to go before they could be harvested. They're not quite ready, but they are tall. So I'm really happy about that. But I mean, I think some of these crazy colors are so awesome. Look at the color on this cone. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's gonna get much bigger, but they're just like explosive. Here's another coxcomb variety. So the Solosh is coming along. Here's one right here. And then the zinnias are finally coming along. This bed has struggled so hard. I think it was probably earwig damage. Uh, even though I could never find any bugs, but I do have lots of earwigs in the garden. Um, but you can see, you know, they've been, all the leaves have been skeletonized. And so it has taken, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that these have actually been able to push through. I thought I was going to have to just sacrifice this entire bed of zinnias, uh, which I was okay with. I was bummed out at first, but you know, that's, that's farming. Um, but they are coming on just fine now. Some of them are still too short, but I'm, I'm starting to get some really tall stems, which I'm super stoked about. Look at this really interesting color. I think this is from the Lilliput mix from Florette. Um, it's either that or the Little Flower Girl, but it's really interesting. It's kind of like a, like a salmon tawny color. It's really interesting. Um, this is, you know, I think this is the Benares Giant Orange, and that's just, just starting to open. That's a much more open one. Um, Benary's Giant White. Yeah, so I'm enjoying the zinnias. This is really fun. Last year are the zinnias I grew with the Oklahoma series, which are like these guys. So very tiny. Um, so I've never grown the giants before, and this is the first year, and they're all starting to come on, and I'm really enjoying them. There's another one. Basil did not come in happily as I wanted it to. I mean, it's flowering. That's nice, but it was not thick and lush like I expected. Uh, this is all lemon, uh, Miss Burns lemon basil. It just struggled. It also got uh, predated upon, and so maybe it just never recovered. Oh well, there's always next year. Final bed. This is a ornamental grass, which is um, all for um, bouquets. Um, there's Orlea there, which this one's actually a little bit taller, which is good because some of them are just not too short. And then this is some of the last straw flower. Um, I've been cutting on those for bouquets as well. I will never grow Shasta daisies again. Yes, they're pretty, but one, their stems are really weak. Uh, two, they get eaten uh, very easily and pooped on by insects and so they just look crappy. <laughs> I mean that's awful. You can't put that into a, a bouquet. So um, I'm not going to grow this again. At least not for bouquets. And see here's what I'm dealing with. I don't know what it is but do you see that hole? Yep. Something large. I need to find a way to get some snakes in the garden. That would really help me with my rodent problem. Um, this is uh, Eryngium. I think it's the blue steel version. Really pretty, but also really prickly. But it's cool in bouquets. Uh, still have a little bit of status left, and I'm still cutting on that for bouquets for the CSA. This was all ornamental grasses. It's been completely decimated by something. Again, it's interesting because whatever this is, is literally pulling entire plants out of the ground. So that's why I'm thinking it's gotta be um, some kind of mammal. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is a, this was the very first um, fall sown um, bit of scabiosa or pincushion flower. These are the red fire king. Um, so they, just like I showed you with the black, uh, black knight, this is how the, they start out. And then they start to open up and they get these nice puffy flowers and these little 
white wheels in there. This is a half open white one. And there's also a really pretty pink in here too, which was a total surprise. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that that was part. Of, I must have planted a mix. Anyway, these were fall planted seedlings. And so um, this was basically the first succession. And the ones that I showed you earlier, the Black Knight ones, those were um, planted in the spring. Here's a small little patch of Gumfrina, also for bouquets, but these stems are not very tall, so I don't know. We'll see how that goes. And then another big bunch of zinnias. You know, the hot weather, even though it's hard on us, uh, flat heat-loving flowers like zinnias love it. So this 101 degrees, this hundreds that we've been having is great because it actually helps them grow quickly and put on a lot of uh, vegetative growth as well as starting to flower. So that's great for me. <laughs> that guy's just opening. And these stems are nice and tall, so great for bouquets. Um, this here is Crespedia, just a tiny little patch. Um, I will get blooms out of these, I just don't know when, but they're also called billy balls. So they're like little little yellow balls on, on a stick, basically, is what they look like. Um, here's more Celosia, nice and lots and lots of vegetative growth here, and they're starting to get the combs coming out of the top of those. So those will be really cool when they come along. This is another, this is a, a third succession of Celosia here at Cosby Desert School. Some Orlea, which is mm, just too small for bouquets, and then another patch of Scabiosa, and I love this Docus. Look at how pretty that is. I use these for filler. This is it before it starts to really open. And then here's a little more open stage. And this is the um, even more open stage. And they'll get, uh, even once they completely opened and the flowers start to fall away, the, um, the seed head is just so pretty. The pollinators love them too. Look at that little bee. Yeah, there's all kinds of, it's, it's just great. I love it. And then some more scabiosa in here that I'm picking out. Um, scabiosa, when it is done, the seed head is, you'll see why it's called pin cushion. When you look at the seed head, let me find one for you. Here you go. Here's a bunch. So that is a um, done with blooming seed head for scabiosa. Yeah, it does look like a pin cushion. So that's about it for the front garden slash farm area. Um, there's lots more going on in the back garden, but um, it's direct sun back there right now and really hot. And so uh, I'll wait until another time to make a, a little tour of that. Um, but I hope you guys um, enjoyed the, this little garden tour today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you liked what you saw today, please click the like button and subscribe button. And I will see you next time. Bye.